Now that I've discussed about the importance of the thumb, which you can watch in this video here, I want to discuss with you the second scale exercise. Scale exercise is number two, the natural minor. And the reason why it's important is this. You have three different types of minor scales that you will play. Now, as a beginner, you may encounter one very common, which teachers just throw at you and say, this is a minor scale, which is true. But that's the melodic minor, which is very complicated to understand. And you also may hear the harmonic minor. But in this scale exercise, you will learn the foundation. In order to learn the melodic and the harmonic minor, you need to know the most important, the natural minor, because these two are variations of that one. So today, we're going to learn the natural minor. And again, we have the same key signatures that we learned prior. We start with the very last scale we played, which was E flat major. So if you were to play along with me, you would play the E flat major and end here on E flat. The C minor is the relative minor to the E flat major. It's the same fingerings. You just start on a different note. You start there, but use the fingerings for E flat major. And it's simply as zero, one, two, four, zero, low, one, two, four. That's all it is. Play that twice. Do the same thing in the exact same fingers for G minor and for D minor. That's all you need to know. But let's jump right into A minor. A minor, we start to know the importance of the second finger and thumb relationship, our Romeo and Juliet. And so we start here on the A, which is the relative minor for C major. And then you play the fingerings. If, you, if any of this minor and major stuff is confusing you, just look at the fingerings and memorize them. That's all you have to do. Look at the fingerings and memorize them. If you see something on next to the, the clef, which has hashtags, the little flat Bs, guess what? That's going to modify those notes. But here in A minor, there's no modifications. That means every note is natural. And so we're going to play a one, three, four, zero, one, two. You see an arrow slide up the two and a four. And you lead the hand by the thumb. You control the hand by the thumb. Always remember that. <laughs> E minor is the same thing. It's the same as G major, one sharp, and you will play in the same exact fingerings, but here starting on the E, which is the first finger on the D string. Lead the hand with the thumb. You are now ready to learn a new note, which is the plus four. The plus four is just like the minus one. It is a location on your cello. So whenever I use the word plus four or minus one, that is dictating to you two things. I'm communicating to you a finger to use and an exact place on your cello. Here's your first position. It's a natural four right here. But if you were to add a little bit of space to that four, the hand were to shift up with the thumb and that is a plus four. Plus four is always played with the fourth finger and is always one half interval above your regular four, which is first position. Remember that. So in B minor, you have your hand here in first position on the D string. Follow along. Control the hand by controlling the thumb. Shift the thumb up one half step, maintaining its shape. It starts with two, plus four, zero, one. You can relax your hand. Three and then four, shifting up to fourth position. Fourth position is really easy. All you have to do is drop your hand. This is where I'm going to tell you to stop thinking. Watch this video to learn about how to stop thinking. 
I'm not kidding. Drop your hand. Don't think about it. Find that place on your cello where, check this out, where the thumb here, where the thumb and the first finger, you're gonna run your hand along. This is the only time when your first finger and thumb are together, by the way. Your thumb and your first finger are going to start to spread out like this. Find that place right before it spreads out. On very well-designed cellos, that place right there, before it starts to get wider, that is the beginning of fourth position. The beginning of fourth position is usually the string, which is always the string next. And so you're gonna be here, one, three, four, shifting up, using that thumb and that first finger coming together and waiting for that, the widening of the neck right before it widens, put that finger down. There's your A. And don't think, drop your third finger and then drop your fourth finger if you were to continue on, but you start, stay there for the B minor. Let's do that again. We're starting here on the B minor. You're starting the extended first position, which is right here. First position, slide up a half step, and that's what it's like. Watch this video about how to play in extension because I go into this shifting, this movement that you do. So you're now here in your extended first position, which is two on the three, two, four, excuse me, two plus four, zero, one, three, you're shifting your hand back. You see how it transformed back, four, Shifting up to fourth position, dropping the hand, not like this, not like this, but relaxed like this, feeling where the thumb and the first finger sort of widen out right before they widen out, placing the first and then placing the three. It is really that simple. When you shift back, it's a three one. You shift back to this. This is where your tapes will definitely help you because you will be able to shape your hand because this shape here is much smaller than this shape here. So remember to m use those tapes. Watch this video about tapes, super important. And you can learn how the difference between this shape is and this shape. Let's play the B minor scale, two sharps. Slide up, don't think, just place it. Don't stretch, don't try, just drop it. Here you have to think. Place that thumb and the second finger on its place. And then the fourth finger, nice and out there. And this is the last bit I'll share with you. Here I have my thumb on the back of the neck. You're gonna slide your thumb up a half step. And without even thinking, you're gonna drop your fourth finger. And it should sound pretty well in tune. With training, you'll get much better at this. And of course, with time, you'll become better at playing cello. The next scale is the F sharp minor, which is three sharps. Nothing to be scared about because you already know the fingerings. Look at the fingerings. It's the same as B minor. By thinking about the fingers that are not playing, the thumb and the other fingers in the hand, spacing those fingers out with your training and with your practice, you will be able to play your scales and your songs and your etudes much better. So please take a look at the scale exercise one and two and play them in conjunction. All my beginning students learn this within a month. They all start playing the scales back and forth and they all start shifting. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and stick around because I think you're going to learn. Please like and subscribe and stick around. I think you're going to learn a lot.